Hi there, and welcome to a module for designing effective machine learning monitoring. In this module, we will cover key questions to consider when customizing machine learning monitoring for your model. In previous models, we reviewed possible metrics and approach to tracking the performance of machine learning models in production. There was a lot of theory. In this module, we will try to put it all together and go through specific questions you might have when setting up machine learning monitoring system for a particular model. We will do a deeper dive and cover many questions like how to select and prioritize machine learning monitoring metrics, how and when to retrain machine learning models, how to choose a reference dataset, how to implement custom metrics in machine learning monitoring, and how to choose an appropriate machine learning monitoring architecture. This module is mostly theoretical. The two modules after this one will be code-focused. At the end of this module, you will know how to design an optimal approach to machine learning monitoring considering the model risks, criticality, and deployment scenario. Let's dive in. In this video, we are going to discuss logging for machine learning monitoring. Let us start from the question, what is a good machine learning monitoring system? I believe there are three very important components here. First is instrumentation, because we need to make sure that we collect or compute useful metrics or statistics for further analysis. And here I want to underline a useful concept, because we definitely can calculate a lot of things, but the idea here is not to overload us with useless statistics, but to make sure that we compute things which will help us further to analyze model behavior and resolve issues. The second part is alerting. We need to define what is the unexpected behavior of our service and how to detect it. I mean, what are metrics, what are the thresholds, and when we need to send an alert to engineer. So how many issues should happen in the fixed period of time before we send an actual alert to engineer? And what is the alerting policy? So how engineers should react? What steps should be taken after receiving the specific alerts? Finally, especially when we are talking about complex machine learning systems, we need to implement debugging. So debugging is very important because we need to provide our engineers with enough context to figure out what has happened with the model and resolve the issue. Just to remind you that the actual setup of machine learning monitoring system depends on many, many different factors, so there are no standard solution or standard design. We need to take into account machine learning service implementation because it can be an online service operating in their, under a high load or it can be a batch model. We need to take into account things like environment stability, feedback loop, do you have an immediate feedback or it is delayed, we need to take into account team resources, do we have enough resources to implement machine learning monitoring system and operate it, and of course this case criticality, scale and complexity. So what exactly to log and monitor? There are quite a lot of statistics and metrics we can calculate, but we are going to discuss it in the details in our next video. But now I would like to focus on what should we log in order to make sure that later we can collect and calculate useful metrics. Now let's discuss logging and instrumentation. That's very important to start with the logging, especially if you are talking about the service, right? You must log the service logs. This is generally all the events which happens with your logs. So there can be many different types of actions and one of those actions should be prediction, right? When the service receives some input data and answer with the output. So uh, it's necessary to make sure that you have your service logs in order to logging. So it's a must for any production service, but it's also necessary not just for the purpose of logging, but also for service health monitoring and debugging. When you logged all your service log, you need to make sure that your predictions logs are logged correctly. Here I mean that you need to make sure that when you log the predict event, you include there all related information, like what was the model input, 
what was the model's output, and if you do have data related to the feedback or ground truth, it makes sense to log it also. It's very useful for things like model quality monitoring, also retraining, debugging, and audits. There are different ways how you can implement this. So generally, it really depends heavily on the way how you deployed your machine learning models. So generally, the idea is that you have your machine learning model service, right? And then you have some inputs and the predictions and you implement some logging. So you have a prediction store where you store your prediction data. Basically, there are two ways how you can then implement monitoring. We discussed it before. It can be machine learning monitoring service or monitoring jobs operated with help of pipeline manager. There are many ways how you can connect your machine learning monitoring service or pipeline with the data. The first idea is to use your prediction store. So in case you use machine learning monitoring service, it can pull data from the prediction store and then compute all needed metrics. If you use monitoring jobs, those jobs can also load data from the prediction store. So this is the first option. The other option is that you can actually send the data to your machine learning monitoring service directly from your machine learning service. Right? In this case, it would be not like a pool, but rather a push, right? Because you just send your data from the machine learning service to machine learning monitoring service. And in case you want to have an online monitoring, so you want to update your dashboard in near real time or real time, it might be a bit better. In this case, you kind of separate two steps, monitoring and logging, but it also works quite nice. Now let's see how we build monitoring dashboard. In this case, you need to create the metric store. This is the place like a database or object storage in case you do store quite complex objects, right? It can be a distributed database for some reasons, but in most cases it's some database where you store your calculated metrics. And machine learning monitoring dashboard uses this metric store as the data source and build the panels on top of those calculated metrics. So the idea is that you push those metrics from the machine learning monitoring service or from the monitoring jobs to this metric store and then make your machine learning monitoring dashboard to use this metric store as the data source. One can ask why actually do we need to have two different stores like prediction store and the metric store? Well, the answer is that because we have different requirements for predictions and metrics. When it comes to prediction store, we need to make sure that we can store our logs securely for a large period of time. So in this case, we want to use a particular type of storages, which for instance provides us with the backups, etc. etc. So it's one type of storages. But when it comes to monitoring dashboard, Practically, we want to make sure that we can quite quickly rebuild the panels, interact with the systems. So here we want to use the storage, which allows us to quickly query the data and reload it to monitoring dashboard. So that's the other type of storage. This is why it's the preferable architecture, I would say. But definitely you can limit yourself with only one store, for example, prediction store. It can work with small data if you really do not have like a tons of metrics calculated and when you pull some data to monitor and dashboard, especially if you rebuild something like change the period or create new type of panel and you don't really need it to happen like in milliseconds. In this case, that's quite a nice idea to just connect your monitor and dashboard to a prediction store. This can work quite fine. The other scenario where you can limit yourself with only prediction store is when you don't really have a machine learning monitoring service, but you rather calculate some ad hoc or scheduled reports with help of batch scripts. In this case, you can definitely use your prediction store, generate your reports and store it somewhere. So that's also a good start, right? Before you implemented the solid machine learning monitoring system. Well, we just discussed how we can set up the architecture for logging. The next question is what exactly to log? We are going to cover it in the next video.